Hey, this is Catherine, and I am here with Mr. James Gaucher, who is going to be sharing some tricks of the model railroading trade with us. So let, tell us what you're doing. Okay, this is what's called sculpture mode. This is one of the techniques used to make mountains. And it's a very simple process. You just mix it in a mix, and you can use a bowl, but they make these uh, containers to put it in, which is a lot easier. To mix and you just add water to it and so how much do you have to measure it well you got you got to play with it a little bit uh, I get it a little bit wet and I start doing it you want it to look like molasses when you get done okay. see it's still kind of dry mm -hmm. so you want it kind of um, pliable or moldable I guess right and it dry it sets up it solves uh, the water real fast and it's really easy to work with and real easy to clean. Kind of looks like oatmeal. Yeah, it looks like a texture of oatmeal. Okay, we'll go to the room for putting it on. Awesome. Okay, that's all right. This is the type of foam I use. It's, it's a sheet foam, a lot of places. Sometimes you go around furniture stores, they're unpacking furniture, refrigerators. And I've been, I, every time I see some, I stop and pick it up. So I haven't had to buy any of my foam. I just, you know, get the, and you cut it out, and you can cut it out with a, with a foam cutter. Just like this right here. And, you know, it, it's, it's a hot wire system. Mm -hmm. And it gets real hot like that, and you just cut right through. That's cool. Does it work for cheese, too? Hmm? Did, does it work for cheese, too? The cheese? Yeah, it looks like a cheese. Oh, I, I don't know. I've never tried cheese. But anyway, I got one sitting right here. And what you want to do, you put the glue on the foam, but you don't put it on the front because you're going to be trimming with that cutter. And if it, when you cut it gets the glue, it won't cut no more. Okay. So you always want to put your glue in the back of the foam and on, on between each layer. And then you can come back with this tool and, and, and cut. Okay. See? And then the holding of all this together is this hydrocap. I mean, so the sculpture mode. Right, once you cut, once you cut like that, it holds it all together. The glue is just really to tack it in place. Okay. And you can and you just keep stacking it up, and keep cutting it. And if after a while you might, you know, keep cutting and keep cutting until you finally get it like you want it. Nice. And then when you put your sculpture mold on top of it, you look at it. So we know I left. I made a hole. I don't. So you just build up with the sculpture mold. So you kind of don't know what you're doing until you get to the end. This is a place that uh, is ready for the first coat. As you notice, the uh, foam is glued together in pieces. And you take a carving knife, a uh, hot knife, and you shape it. And then once you get it shaped, you take the, the sculpture mold and you use the back of the spoon and you just smear it on just like this. Looks very relaxing. Is this where you go to uh, de-stress? <laughs> this is the trick. This little tool right here, when you get, get it all put on there, you can keep rubbing it, keep rubbing it. So you want to flatten it down? or? Yeah, you flatten it down, you get it nice and smooth. And this is the first layer I'm doing here. This is already the first layer. But this, I was just showing you how it looks when you first put it on. Mm -hmm. you, uh, now this don't have to be very smooth or whatever, because like I say, it's the first layer. Okay. Now, I'm gonna go right here. I always use to cover up the tracks. The tracks would be put down first. Now, I'm gonna do a second coat on the little spot here. That's why I add a little bit more water to it. Okay, and how many layers do you normally Two. Have? Just two? How long do you let it dry for? It takes about uh, 15 minutes where you can touch it and you can't move it and, and then you can just keep working it. So you can put the second layer on 15 minutes after the first? No, 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 you gotta wait another day. Okay. Because it is very wet and it, 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 you don't want to why do you need to put on two layers? Well, the thing is, 
when you do the first layer, you really get, then get to see what it looks like. And you say, well, you know, I should have done this. Is this need to be bigger or you need to fill a hole in? And uh, when you get ready to do all that, uh, you know, you, you, it gives you a chance to cover up your mistakes. It's kind of hard to do something like put. It's like p putting on paint. You know, you don't, it, it's, it's better to put more than one coat. Gotcha. You see, when you just, it's sticking to the thing, but it's not really getting smooth. It's, it's going to be getting smooth in a minute. As it dries, does it get smooth? No, I'm, I'm, when I use that tool. The, the little putty knife? Yeah, it's, it's a rubber thing. It's, it's, not, it's not stiff. It's the rubber spatula? Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it looks just like a spatula, right. So we are making mountains today with Mr. James Gauchet. And this is the best thing in the world to use to make mountains because it's just, you can carve it, you can do all, all, all kinds of stuff with it, and yeah. Uh, so when it dries, how do you carve with it? Just well, you can, you can you can take a sandpaper and sand the rough spots, and you okay. can you know you can you can take a saw and cut it. Nice. All right, so you have finished with the second coat and you've smoothed it all out. So is this one done when it dries? And then uh, when it dries, now we're going to go to the next stage. I'm going to move down here just a little bit. Perfect. Now Mr. Gaucher is doing his Bob Ross technique. So go ahead. Tell him again All what right. you're doing. This is the, the, the background color, uh, colors for the, uh, the scenery where, where you, if you plant trees, shrubbers, whatever to cover up the white that you'll stick through there if you don't cover it up and you'll see it and this is just a little technique that you, you, you can play with it a little bit and and uh if you'll notice on the rest of the video that i've done this on every around every track and you can keep making it any type of colors you want you just keep mixing with the paint Fun. And have fun, that's right. And if you want to, you don't even have to plant any grass. You could just leave it alone like this and put your grass spots or get your bushes. There's bushes up here that come, you give them in a package, you can spread them out. And you got rocks like this right here, by this right here, you got rocks sticking up. So you can do all kinds of things with, with, with that. You don't have to pluck, uh, have grass everywhere. So it's up to your own creative interpretation of what you want to do. Well, I, you might say after seven layouts, I've learned an easier way to do things. <laughs> you know, sometimes you get in the middle of something and you say, gee whiz, I didn't find no it's going to be this hard to do. I've done something different. Right. So the thing is, is experiment, play with it. You know, you might, you might, you might like it, you might not like it. You know, you, you can always cover it up. That is true. And so the blue tape is to, so you don't All get right. paint on the track. All right, I'm gonna skip down here now. You'll notice I've got some here already here. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna tie it all together. And why aren't you doing the middle part? The middle part is where I come back and glue the rocks like this here. Okay. They'd be glued on there and the rocks would be painted like that. And then I fill up a uh, hydrocal around it. And then I end up doing like this. Okay. Nice. So how many, how many days does it take to put together a train model display? I've been 15 <laughs> years on this one, <laughs> but I just play with it now and then. I mean, I'm, I, it's not straight time. No, it just, it takes time. Right, and I, and I do most of it by myself. I got a daughter, I got three daughters that are artists and they come in and help me do some of the, some of the uh, artwork. As you'll notice all the track, well, it's not here, but from here on back, all the track is, is weathered. It's all side weather. Okay. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm a little unsteady with my hands, so uh, They'll come one in. of my daughters does all that stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. Teamwork. You just have to weather the side you see, you don't have to weather, weather both sides. 